Well, it's Tuesday, and so joining us now is In Focus Health correspondent Lino Mudu. In honor of Women's Day, Lino focuses on women's health. Uh, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Well, as the world commemorates International Women's Day on March 8th today, the well-being of women continues to be a challenge in many places around the world. Maternal mortality, violence against women, and infectious diseases such as malaria and HIV AIDS remain constant threats to women's health in underdeveloped countries. UNAIDS reports that rates of HIV infection continue to rise among women in the developing world. The organization says more than 60% of all adults living with HIV in sub-Saharan Africa are women. Dr. Eli Katabira is president of the International AIDS Society. Fortunately, over the years, there's been a lot of empowerment uh, to, for women. We've done that through, for example, to ensure that their children uh, don't get infected through the prevention of mother-to-child transmission, but also with the Caprissa study coming out that there is a possibility of an infective microbicide. International Women's Day was established to celebrate women's achievements, and this year, the day recognizes what education and employment have on improving the lives of women. UNICEF says educating girls for six years or more drastically improves the survival rates and care of their children. Educated girls have higher self-esteem and are more likely to avoid unwanted pregnancies, violence, and HIV infection. Dr. Katabira says International Women's Day is an opportunity to promote the fight against HIV AIDS. To take advantage of the Women's Day is that uh, uh, this is most of the countries, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, where I'm familiar with, the programs are organized by various communities and activists to point out the roles and impact of HIV on these women. For example, in Uganda, uh, we have a number of organizations, uh, particularly led by people living with HIV who are women, who go out and emphasize the importance to ensure that programs are put in place to support them, and not only to get to getting care, but also to access prevention messages and strategies across the country. The president of the International AIDS Society says the community has an important role to play in helping to curb the incidence of HIV AIDS in sub-Saharan Africa. What is important is to involve the community in all activities related to HIV, particularly care, and as you know these days we've been uh, promoting the use of antiviral therapy to make sure that even people at the community level in rural areas have access to this drug. Secondly, the information about protection and prevention so that it is available even to the most rural person. Those are the key issues. And today we are examining the role of women in the fight against HIV, in particular at the community level. And joining us now is Anna Sango. She is a member of the International Community of Women Living with HIV. She is a pair educator in Zimbabwe and a tireless advocate for the reproductive and sexual health rights of young women living with HIV. Anna, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you. I'm so, good. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. First of all, why was it important for you to be involved, to become involved as a pair educator? educator and as an advocate? Well, it um, actually comes from the experience that I had. Um, it pushed me to, to want to, you know, to educate other young women that are like me to not fall into the same trap that I went through. Um, actually, when I had my baby, I had no one to, like, take me through the steps of PMTCT. I just had to push my way through it, and they didn't have help me in any way. I thought that the health service was going to meet me halfway, but they didn't. So it pushed me to say, what of that rural girl in Zimbabwe that isn't as literate as I am? What of that woman that isn't even exposed to these things? What happens to her if she doesn't, you know, get access to these kind of things? So it seems like what it boiled down to was the lack of information, really, that uh, could have prevented you or helped you 
further with your child? Yes, actually the lack of information, there is a vast lack of information in our countries and in our communities. So I think we should really push that we have access to education on such things. And what does your work entail as an advocate and a peer educator? Well, as an advocate, I stand strong for the rights of women. I, um, I stand strong for, we, we, um, for women to really access what they have to access. Uh, as such a peer as such as uh, care exactly uh, sexual health uh, reproductive um, services I as a peer educator I stand as a pillar of strength for my peers like uh, the women that are my age I stand as someone that they can talk to I'm also a counselor and um, I just work my way through the community and try and you know form a relationship with them that they can have someone to relate to who's more of their age and what do you see in the, your community with regards to the impact of HIV AIDS among young women like you? I see a lack of knowledge. Uh, people really need to be educated and we really need to have programs that uh, bring education to our communities. Uh, I see that uh, people, they, they really want to learn but they, they don't really know which channels to go through to go through to. So I think we should be there. We should uh, have so many women being there in the community and trying to educate other young women and women as well. Now, what do you advocate to, to, the, to the official, public officials, government, or who do you, who do you talk to about this? Everyone. <laughs> we advocate to the public officials. We advocate to everyone. We even advocate to some people in the community because we know we have also barriers in the community. So we practically go a regional district national, global, international, everything. We, have, uh, we advocate to everyone. And what, type, what types of changes do you, have you seen uh, that are really encouraging you to continue? Um, so far, we, uh, recently we had been advocating to have to be included in like sitting in some meetings, in some decision making uh, meetings. So, so far, we, we've really had an improvement because we've been able to sit there. Now we're just waiting for the needs to be met. We're just met, waiting for everything to materialize. So, so far there is an improvement, but we're still looking forward for more. And we hope for more improvements. Anna, thank you so much for yes. joining us thank today. Thank you very and much, good Lino. luck in your work. Thank you very much. And that was Anna Sango joining us today, a member of the international community. Back to you. Well, thank you very much, Lino. Thanks for the informative health segment. And be sure to watch uh, Lino Mudu's reports every Tuesday and Thursday right here on In Focus.